100% off the strength, man. Off the strength. I did it all out of strength. All out of strength. I did it all out of strength. All out of strength. Fuck, fuck, and I'm gonna do this off the strength. Run it back, I ain't relaxed. That's just facts off the strength. It's off the strength. Can't get that off the strength. What's going on, fam? This is K.R. Jones of the Off The Strength Podcast, and I am here to tell you to like, listen, subscribe, and if you're feeling freaky, visit offthestrength.com. That's where you can go and get more information on us. That's where we can link, we can build, we can connect, and let's make this thing work. Oh, you feeling juicy today. Hey, man, don't you ever. A little juicy smole. <laughs> don't you ever in your life. Juicy smole. <laughs> you know, what is this? this don't you ever situation? in your long legged life come at me with no juicy. <laughs> when you got the red and black lumberjack on. Yeah, you know I mean, that's how it is, bro. That's how baby, you come baby. Baby. Man, yo, there's been some slender. Ooh. There's been some biggie slender that I really don't like to admit <laughs> about his yeah. breakdown and his lyrics. He had that one bar that was crazy. Nah, he had a few of them. If we're going right, back, and we're being ge- generous about it. He was it. working with Puff. He was, he was telling now him to take that. Now he's looking a little, little crazy and crazy. And stuff starts to age a little bit, man. I am fearful of all things that have come from my childhood ever looking back at them. Today, in particular, because I feel like all my childhood heroes are gone. I feel like all my childhood TV shows was racist as hell. Mm-hmm. I feel like the childhood serial was trying to kill me. I'm afraid to look back. <laughs> it's, it's really not something that I feel at all comfort in. This nostalgia is starting to become something that is really a liability. It's trauma inducing. It definitely is, man. You got anything that you used to think was cool, but now you kind of see, oh, we got, we might have to back away from that. Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Diddy, you know what I'm saying? It, it, the list goes on. What's good, everybody? What's good? <laughs> Welcome back to yet another episode of Off the Track, where we give you the inside look into all things wellness culture. I'm a trainer called Tony, and of course, with me, I have a gentleman of extraordinary league. K.R. Jones is in the building. That's right, folks. We are back. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of all type, from near and far, you are now in store for a treat because it's the return of the variety show. That's when we give you our best foot forward. So hopefully you take your best foot forward. You do that two-step, that tango, whatever it is you need to do to make it on through the week with the best goddamn wellness information available. Yeah, yeah. Brother Jones. What's the word? How are you feeling today, my friend? I'm feeling like you cut off my Will Smith comments. I ain't done yet. Go ahead. Go uh, for it. <laughs> now, Will Smith just put out a verse rapping with Russ. That was terrible. It was horrible. It was only to be uh, over outdone by Will Smith putting out the verse with the homie that you've been bumping. At to- uh, I don't even want to mess up his name, but the Asian homie from overseas. Oh, no. Nah. <laughs> they got a song he got together? A, he, that same song that you've been bumping. He get, Will Smith jumped his ass on it. And it sounds insane. Nope. Yeah, so I, I don't want to Parents just don't understand. Adults just don't understand. I don't know what he's doing. I'm happy that that man has seemed to broken out of the sunken place, but I do not want any of his bars today. Sliding out of that. We're going to talk <laughs> about my week, brother. And uh, now, my week was wrapped up, I would say, in connecting with my tribe. Okay. So I was able to connect with a few folks that I haven't seen in a long time and just really like, you know, shoot the shit with them and and talk life and see what's going on. And I had to do that because in real life, in real time, brother, this sad shit from Mm -hmm. this shirt that you got on, this seasonal affective disorder is real. Like the sun going down at five has a direct impact on my mental health. My brain shuts off. I am completely unmotivated. And if I don't do it before the sun goes down, it ain't happening. It was a sad-ass week in New York, bro. In life. A lot of long faces. <laughs> it was a lot going on. You know? A lot of long faces. A lot of people looking all kind of disheveled outside, man. And if I had to give my week a title, it would be disappointed but not discouraged, Kyle. You know, I've been jumping through some hoops on the investment and the job front, we took a couple of good meetings this week. I thought it sounded good. But again, the delays post-election. <laughs> Money's getting funny <laughs> as Every we start time. moving things around. <laughs> Listen, when the money is funny, it's, it ain't no joke. It ain't coming around to no avail, Kyle. I feel like I keep pushing this damn thing forward. But you know what? I can't let these people be discouraging me, man. I, I'm not certain what's going to happen in our current political climate. I'm also not certain what's going to happen in our economic climate, but I damn sure I'm not waiting for anybody to come save me. It's on me to liberate me, Kyle. That's really how I felt about it in summation, my brother. And as I'm going through this, man, talking about hit after hit after hit, 
can't get up. <laughs> He's like, don't get up. They're going to hit you again. Bam. Man, I got a call that came in at a time that was so divine, I can't call it anything less than, my brother. I'm talking about I needed it badly. And it came through right at the moment that I needed it. And I wanted to bring that into this week's Ask the Professional Kyle. I want to talk about divine intervention, my friend. What's the word on it? Can you share a personal experience where you felt a profound sense of divine guidance or intervention at a time when you were facing significant challenges or uncertainty? Word. Uh, The faithful listeners in the show will know that I am indeed blessed and highly favored. Mm -hmm. So I got to start with that. Okay. Uh, Secondarily, I would say the thing that comes to mind would be uh, there was a point where the last time I was employed, I quit my job. Mm -hmm. Just same day, no two week notice. It was fuck y'all niggas. I'm out. You gave them two day notice. I gave them two day. Two day. You're going to find out why I'm not coming in two months. Here's your keys. Here's your card. Y'all figure it out. I'm not with it. I feel you. And that's a very radical decision to make when you got bills to pay, when you got a partner that you live with that you ain't even consult with. Like, I'm just going off of, nah, fuck them. I'm out. Mm -hmm. And immediately there's a bit of remorse that comes in when the reality sets in. Mm -hmm. of like, yo, I just lost my job, my benefits, all these things voluntarily, like on my own. I did this. And... I was searching for what was next and you talked about divine intervention and like that timing and it was a day where I just got up and I'm like you know what I'm gonna take this walk and do what I need to do and I walked into some opportunities it was like yo my homie hit me was like yo we got a sponsorship opportunity for this and then I walked into a, a, a new brick and mortar space that was down the block that was like hey we're looking for yoga teachers to do this kind of thing and it was like damn like I walked into these opportunities because I got up washed my ass went outside and I did it but it was the hope that I needed to continue to push forward like yo there is opportunity out here but you gotta meet it and it was divinely timed for that to happen there's a lot of other occurrences in life when it takes place but i think you just have to really be appreciative of when these things happen and recognize the magnitude of them a lot of times we take things for granted uh and and don't appreciate them as much as we should man i do appreciate that i just want to go a little bit further with it you know has that experience and your you know just uh, experience in that whole divine intervention has that changed how you approach helping others for sure talk to me about it i do my best to not give people what they want but give them what they need mm-hmm. and that's very different because a lot of times people always need money or something but sometimes you need somebody to tell you the truth you need somebody that cares about you to tell you the shit that you don't want to hear so that it can get you into that next gear into that next mode in life and i think that help is the most pivotal because that's the help that I received that actually made that shift in my life to allow me to get to that next level or through that dark space or whatever the case may be. But I, I do think that help is something that is hard. It's hard to give. It's hard to ask for. Mm-hmm. So being able to do both is, is something that I feel like I've kind of worked my way up to over the years. I'll start from the latter portion and work my way back to the beginning. I would say the ability to see how that intervention can help others is something that gives me an approach that try to offer a little bit more grace. And honestly, a lot of times I think when you take the time to notice somebody and actually see them in the full sense of what that's supposed to mean, see them for their efforts, see them for their desire, see them for what their purpose is supposed to be. That in and of itself, anything that you're operating from that lens is often going to be something that I think in your your case is kind of like, here's what you need right now. I could see you. I, I can affirm you in that space. And I can't tell you, Kyle, that I always get that right, because that's just also not necessarily what my default setting to look at the world is. But I do try to make myself better every day in that kind of perspective. And I don't have a high index of even where the divine intervention of divine timing comes from. That's why I know it has to come into the space where I needed it, because this is not how I typically operate. But what I do say is that even when you're in spaces of being down and you don't necessarily have all the answers, that's especially the time that you should be open to a little bit of 
a change in the script, so to speak. And how that came in for me was somebody telling me, no, I see what you're doing. I, I understand where you're going. And I've been there even when we first met. I was in a position that you were in. You just might not have noticed it. You might not have had the, you know, the maturity to understand what I was actually telling you at that time. Because, again, when you're young, you, you think like a young man. Now, as I'm advancing in this space, I kind of understand what the timing is, what the overall impact and what the desire needs to be to really take all of this uncertainty and translate it into something that I'm really going to be positive about in the future, man. So that's where I landed this week. Now, it was a lot of stuff to get to that. Yeah. But I think I ultimately landed in a good space, man. So hopefully that helps anybody out there in this stressful, unprecedented week. Allow the timing to work the way that it needs to work. And hopefully that moves you into the direction. And if you have the capacity, please do lend a little bit of help to your fellow man. How's that sound, Brother Jones? Sounds like the thing that people need to get them to do that two-step, that tango, whatever it is they need to do. What the world needs now is love. You're going to get out of here love. with that blue-eyed soul. I'm going to get into this next little bit of the good, Kyle. I'm going to get into a little bit of bad. Uh-huh. And I want to get into a little bit of the ugly this week. That's right, Kyle. It's time for this week's episode of Rip from the Headlines. And my brother, I'm going to start with something good. Okay. Now, when I say the name Alex Toussaint to you, what comes to mind? Sounds familiar, but I don't really know. Alex Toussaint is the renowned Peloton instructor. We met that brother. We definitely met that brother. That's why I'm ashamed that he you said what you just my said. He swag. You know so, what I'm saying? So I, I like how you how I've retracted your first statement. Yeah, for <laughs> I'm gonna sure. give you another chance. I said it sounded like <laughs> I was like I don't know for certain. What comes up when you now remember that brother and think about that brother? He complimented my swag. He okay. was like, you put that shit on. I was like, I know. What's up with you? <laughs> you know? And uh, it was a, a amazing event that we met him at because that was the most free stuff I've ever gotten. I never got that paycheck that they said, though. <laughs> so, so Alex Susan <laughs> is a Peloton instructor <laughs> who has been famous for appearing in things like the NBA All-Star Game. One time. But still, he did it. How many times have you been in an All-Star Game? Zero. Okay. <laughs> So you gonna let this brother get these flowers right no, now? One hundred percent. Because he's taking group fitness to levels that I have never seen anybody else take it to. He has. I'll give him that stamp. And man, I saw this week that this brother actually had a collaboration where he made his own weights. Kyle, I'm talking about. There is a SPX Alex Tucson gym out there that okay. carries his own stamp and carries his own version of his weights with his moniker on it and everything else. How do you feel about seeing Alex Toussaint come up with a whole strength training lab now? It's a space that he's using in his house, but he has the moniker Do Better and uh, like emboldened across a couple of different spaces. He's got his uh, his signature logo on his dumbbells. Like, I would like to come downstairs and work out in my own gym and have my name on all my shit. I don't know how you feel about that, but I would come in with, uh, nah, I did that. This, this is me right here. What say you, sir? I'm happy for that aspiration that you have. Yeah. I don't necessarily need that, but shout out to him for doing that uh, and really advancing off the bike. I think the stuff that we talk about with fitness professionals on platforms that large, that grow that big, is how the larger companies mistreat those people. So for him to take that pivot into his own lane with his own weights and his own gym, I'm around for it. And if you ever type in Peloton in the GIF section, like images on your iPhone, he got mad quotes, like mad Alex Tucson quotes of the do better. And like he be dropping real shit in there. So shout out to him for that. Hell yeah, man. I right, talking about something real. Next up, Kyle, I saw that a hospital is taking the old adage of food being medicine to heart, Kyle. This is a Boston hospital that is now going to start treating patients with food that they grow on their garden rooftop, okay? This Boston hospital is pioneering this food is medicine approach, and they are taking the initiative that is going to try to make patients have access to healthier and more sustainable food options as they're under the care. This rooftop garden is going to serve as a model to integrate sustainable agriculture and healthcare at the same time. What's your thoughts about that, my friend? I'm around for it. Now, where did you say this was again? Boston. Yeah, see, that's not for me. You get what I mean? Like, <laughs> I love the idea of it, and I wish more hospitals could adapt something of that sort. But when you speak of Boston specifically, I don't really think that's a space that would be for me. How many times have you been to Boston? At least single digits. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
I'm not going to camp for it. Like, I really care about it that a much. solid three, you know? I just wanted to know. I was just curious about that exploration, man. I got to champion anybody that's going to take a innovation in agriculture and start to push that into a different level because yeah. I want to see this in all of the communities. Why can't we have rooftop gardens and spaces that, I don't know, have food deserts? Because that would be a great thing. It would. You got a lot of black tar <laughs> rooftops in a lot of spaces that I grew up in that could easily be turned into the same thing. Dirty HVACs and whatnot. Yeah, come on, man. I want to see this take real root, no pun intended, in the communities that need it the most, man. So I got to champion them for figuring this out and hopefully... They go straight to the ghetto right after that, man. But I know in the ghetto, this is a high level of hope that might not be meant, Kyle. But you know what? I got to come into a little bit of the changing gears, getting into a little bit of an update on this next story, man. Uh, we talked about previously how there was a bid happening for Blink Fitness after they filed for uh, Chapter 11. This is the Equinox property that was their low price, high value property. Uh, there's many different locations all throughout the Eastern Seaboard and they are planning to close down, but there are a couple of different companies that are trying to get in on the action. Now, Kyle, this week, Planet Fitness of all places decided to jump into this bidding war and they are now sitting at the top of the bid putting up $153 million to take care of, take over all the different Blank Fitnesses. Now, people out there might not know that Planet Fitness is one of the top performing fitness brands in the market. Yeah. Their stock rose about 45% from $55 to $80 this year. And they're going to have a little bit more power to spend as they go into this market. And now they will be the only low price, high value option if this goes through inside the U.S. What's your thoughts on that? I hope and pray this don't happen why why is that because that purple and gold <laughs> it's a god awful colorway <laughs> it's a, like we not vikings like what are we doing why why is that the colorway that you chose it's something that is emblematic of where they come from but they got so many of these that fam it is a it's a numbers game they know the person that is really going to be attracted to that don't really care about the aesthetic that much they I'm care about function, yeah, nah. and they care about the convenience and low price, high value. They are the clear winner in that category. I understand why it needs to exist. I would not like to line the pockets of a Planet Fitness, but for the people that need the gym that they can afford, I'm here for that. Man, in the world of mergers and acquisitions, no punches will be pulled, my friend. It's a nasty world out here. It's yet. only getting nasty about the day. Last time I was day. in a blink, it was a domestic violence situation. See, now you're, in gonna the take locker it, room. you're taking it to a whole different direction. I'm just telling you what I saw. When it comes to punching, Kyle, <laughs> personally, I can't wait to see Brooklyn's own Iron Mike Tyson. That's right. Kid Dynamite knocked the living daylights out of Logan Paul, Kyle. But this week, I want to see him take on... Something that's a little bit more in his lane. Kyle, this week Mike Tyson came out and invested into Mr. Charlie's. Now, Mr. Charlie's has been dubbed the Vegan McDonald's. This is a chain that's out in L.A. We haven't really quite seen them over here, but part of Mike's investment is to try to take this beyond where it is and expand it into some different markets. Mike Tyson can't do no wrong in my eyes. Yeah. So I don't know how you feel about this. Brooklyn's own. I'm going to put it out there right now. I'm, I'm asking for your feedback, but I don't really want your feedback, okay? This <laughs> is Kid Dynamite. We riding with Mike. I okay, what happened? I never talk bad about Mike Tyson. Okay, okay. He's on a short list of people that can do and say whatever he need, and he's going to have my support. That's right, man. That's right. Yo, speaking of somebody else that's on that short list, you talked about Dr. Andrew Huberman last week. I did. And you talked about a podcast that you listened to that you found some inspiration from. Now, Kyle, mm -hmm. did you see that Dr. Huberman teamed up with a glasses company called Roka this week? I did not. So Dr. Huberman is putting out a very particular uh, pair of glasses that doesn't just block blue light. These glasses, Kyle, are supposed to lower your stress levels. They're supposed to sync your circadian rhythm. And they're supposed to give you better sleep while protecting your mood, Kyle. I'm talking about this filtered eyewear lenses are now going to be not just the blue and green light blocker, but there's going to be something that's supposed to be optimizing how you feel. Now, Kyle, I'm going to let you take a quick look at these glasses that your guy Huberman has put out. And there's a whole different variety of these amber colored glasses. What's your thoughts on this wellness frames? 
I'm trying to understand who the hell is sleeping with glasses on. <laughs> no, it's it's supposed to be before. Okay. Once you get past a certain time of the day, yeah. blue light is supposed to be blue and green light is supposed to be ruining a lot of the different patterns that you have, and it's giving your body all the wrong signals to stay up, to keep your stress levels up, to you know keep producing cortisol and things of that nature. These glasses are designed to hopefully circumvent some of that, and they got a couple different pairs that I they look Jones esque. If I'm looking at Don't them. put that evil on me. They look like this is the Duck Dynasties right here. You would definitely have these on with a smoking jacket somewhere. <laughs> no, I would not, actually. <laughs> but if you want to send some over here, Andrew Huberman, by all means, I'll style them for you. I'll show you what to do with That's it. That's Am- Andrew Huberman and Roka. And now, finally, Kyle, if we're talking about coming into relaxation eyewear, Kyle, I want to talk to you a little bit about more of this relaxation coming from the alternative beverage market, Kyle. Okay. So now, people will know fans of the show have seen us talk about the energy drink market that companies like Red Bull could sell you up to 12 billion cans in a year. It was only natural to see that there was going to be an alternative come to the market for that. And now, Kyle, this week, I saw that the company Trip has teamed up with Calm. Yes, that's Calm, the mindfulness app. And they came out with a canned Calm, which is a cucumber mint beverage that also comes with a three-month subscription of Calm meditation app coming along with that what's your thoughts of this botanical bliss in a can that comes your way i'm around for this merger i'm around for calm in a can what i'm not around for is this weak ass design that they did (laughs) it's just got the calm app (laughs) exactly trip y'all got enough money to make a better logo than that well that is going to be it from the good bad and ugly on my side of these fitness streets kyle what did you see in your rip from the headlines Man, oh man, let's start off with some good, bad, and ugly of my own, as you mentioned. When I was on the talk of the tick, if you will, Tone, that's mm-hmm. where the youth are these days. So I like to be there to see what's going on. The youth then. I came across a gentleman who decided to take it upon himself to walk barefoot from Los Angeles to New York City. Okay. He got... I want you to look at the, the bottom of his feet. He's got a little stroller that he was pushing. First of all, before we even get to his feet, this looks like a guy who would walk barefoot from New York to Los Angeles, just on the first initial sight. <laughs> like, we don't even have to take the video any further now, than that. The reasoning behind this is to bring awareness to men's mental health. Mm-hmm. One could argue you got to not have all your faculties in order to walk from Los Angeles to New York. One, to do it barefoot Two is a whole nother layer to this situation. I'll push back on the walk aspect from New York to Los Angeles because I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing on the surface level of that. Run, maybe? I'm not anti. Bike ride, maybe. Either one that you want to do. I'm not anti. I'm not knocking that. That's not where this goes wrong. Where this goes wrong for me is the leaps and bounds that we're going through to tie in mental health with things that it clearly is not associated with. Like, I want to understand where Ask that... Ask me how long it took him. I want to understand how long Ask that is. Ask me. Where, how long did it take Eight this man? Eight months. <laughs> he was just trying to get away from his wife. That's really what we're going to talk about. She joined him. <laughs> she joined him, and she was riding in a camper, yeah. like, as he was going through this walk. Yeah, I mean, listen, shout out to them. Couples that uh, stroll together stay together. No, they don't actually, (laughs) which leads me to then the barefoot warm up tone. Now, what if I were to tell you that there was an NFL player out there that was warming up on the field barefoot and leaving the commentary from the people that saw this? Like, what's going on? You know what I mean? I think it actually makes sense if your feet are properly trained for it. There are a lot of different barefoot athletes that you know, have been training themselves for a long time to actually have their feet be responsive as possible. A lot of the times that we don't exercise our feet properly, this is where you're going to have the higher incidences of all different types of lower limb pathologies. So your rolled ankles, your calf sprains, all the rest of that. The people who do have stronger feet tend not to have that. So I'm, if I'm a professional athlete and I've been training like this for a long time, this makes all the sense in the world to me. See, it does make sense when there's science behind it and when you're doing it because it's sports specific. If you're walking barefoot from Los Angeles to L.A. We left that man alone with his I'm, wife. I'm just wherever they know wherever they had to go. Where it should be acceptable as opposed to This is also grass <laughs> or turf or astro turf. turf. It is not grass by any means. It is astro turf. Sliding out of that grass, Tony. Let's talk about 
continuing in the same vein, are you familiar with Tyler James Williams? No. Tyler James Williams is now starring in Abbott Elementary. Okay. He was also the main character in Everybody Hates Chris. I am familiar with this gentleman. He yes. was also in Dear White People. Yes. He has a long lineage of child acting into his adulthood. He was also a feature speaker at this year's Culture Con. That he was, Tony, yeah. where we crossed paths with such a gent. Now, you can see the outfit that he had on because lately he's been showing off his body a Yeah, bit, for sure. If you will. He's a very slender gent, but he likes to show his little shoulders. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He likes to give you a little teardrop on the end there for a, okay. little, for a little delt action. Now, when I came across this video that was actually old, but he was doing a men's health workout routine Mm -hmm. now in this workout routine he talks about being notoriously skinny i think he said he suffers from crohn's disease or Mm -hmm. something of that sort so he wasn't able to put on weight as much as he tried to and he realized to stop trying to fight against his body and work with his body yeah which led him to a lot of body weight exercises uh calisthenics things of that nature and he was working out at home during the pandemic and he realized that he liked that more than actually going to the gym shout out to him the only beef that i have is this brother's kettlebell swing now i want to just briefly show you what his kettlebell swing looks like and i want you to give the people a live look or live read on what it is that you're seeing i honestly don't even need to see it because i'm going to tell you most people's kettlebell swings are terrible just to begin with it's a ballistic exercise that's supposed to be lower body driven and he like most other people is doing an entirely upper body kettlebell swing <laughs> so it's kind of like all right you know that's where you get them shoulders from you know what i'm saying a yeah teardrop. it's just a, it's a very uh energetic front raise is what he's doing <laughs> so i'm not mad at him for doing that as long as he don't hurt himself but that's not how you do a kettlebell swing long as we can agree upon that, we're going to leave Tyler James Williams alone. But shout out to him because, you know, he's Salute. crossing paths with the great ones. You know what I'm saying? As we were at that Culture Con event. Now, earlier you talked about Iron Mike. Yes, sir. Brooklyn Zone. Hell yeah. Did you see any promo that was taking place in New York this week? I did. There were two giant inflatable people. Yes. <laughs> I did see this. <laughs> How do you feel about the giant inflatables taking over Flatiron in New York City? Again, I'm here for all parts of this. I, I hope that nobody they in that... They look like rock'em sock'em robots. <laughs> I hope that nobody in that arena allows Mike Tyson to go down in any way <laughs> if they see... The Paul brothers teaming up on Mike. You know what you must do. I'm not going to say it on the mic, but you know what we have to do. <laughs> Somebody got to go. <laughs> not one, but both of y'all. And I mean, not for nothing, Logan Paul, his record has been pretty unblemished. Like, ain't nobody really put him down. He's also 20 something years younger than him. <laughs> I'm just, just stating idea. facts here. <laughs> We seen what happened with Nate Robinson. Yeah, no, nah, we lost Nate. I don't even know where Nate is at. <laughs> Nate, Nate, Nate might be walking across the country barefoot right now for all I know. It sounds like <laughs> it. From Seattle to New York, just trying to raise awareness on his mental health. Yeah, man, it's one of those things where it's so much promotion going into it. And um, I'm thinking about it being on Netflix. This, yeah. is the, this is the first time we're seeing something live like this on Netflix. Well, they have... Two documentaries and the live uh, on Netflix talking about this. Which is madness to me. They are running it up. I I like to see it. Listen, rumble, young man, rumble. As long as Mike don't go down, I ain't mad at it, bro. If he goes down, I need all Brownsville in there at the same time. Old school rules, yo. If he goes down, what are you going to do, I need all of Brownsville in that ring at the same time. Okay. (laughs) It's it's mob house. Never ran, never will. (laughs) That's that's the only way. It's MOP rules, bro. That's what happens. (laughs) It's the only way it's got to be. Yap that fool. (laughs) Kidnap that fool. Yeah, we can't let Mike go down, bro. That's another one of those childhood icons that I can't look back at. If I'm Mike is hit the ground from Logan Paul I don't know man it's, it's gonna be a bad time I can't do it so we gonna we gonna slide out of that cause that sounds very unsafe if you will and uh, I wanna get into a Raising the Bar segment this week let's raise it up now ladies and gentlemen boys and girls listeners of all type from near and far you're now in store to raise your bar brother Tone yes sir Today, I want to talk a little bit about the idea of multidimensionality. Okay. Right now, 
how you identify, develop, grow, and explore your genetic makeup is all a part of your multidimensionality, right? Now, I had a deeply interesting conversation earlier in the week about genealogy, and I was perplexed by this simple recognition in the power of knowing where you came from. Mm. Uh, absent of history, absent of the origins and the personality traits of those who sacrificed for you to be here, I find it extremely harmful the amount of people, me included, that just don't know our family history and our legacy, mm. right? And the even more unsettling thought is this disconnect of my heritage was planned and designed to be this way. Damn. Now, I don't want to dive too deep into my Dr. Umar bag and start shaming interracial relationships. Nope. But what <laughs> I do. I'm not doing that with you. <laughs> not on this microphone. But what I do want to talk on is this notion of dealing with the world as it is today. Right now, I had to dive back into our older podcast to find some inspiration for this week because, like the top of the show, it was sad. It was rough. Damn sure it was. It was a lot going on. Now, about two years ago, maybe three actually, I stumbled on the podcast that we were talking about. And one of the things that you mentioned was dealing with the world as it is today and not how it was in the past. And it got me to thinking about this concept of the multi dimensionality. And structurally, it's built on the bedrock of occupying space in numerous places. Your likes, your interests, your curiosities, your opinions, the facts, the lived experiences, your success, your failures, they all add up. And when you think about who I am, who you are, what molded you, the influential people in your life that impacted you the most, I start to think about my moral compass specifically right that internal barometer i have to observe what continues to propel me forward but then also what continues to hold me back mm. and as i pontificate on this observance the ideas that come to mind and they start to flood the matrix are my family right the stuff that i do know i don't know about, you know, four or five generations before. But I know my pops used to tell me my great grandfather was a mathematician. I know my grandmother was a hustler who worked for the government in D.C. She did home appraisals and she filed people taxes on the side. I know my Uncle Jimmy owned a barbershop in the hood and he employed many of those folks. Aunt Lucille was a realtor, a school principal, choir director and a gospel music mogul. Uncle Andrew, style was unmatched. It was only matched by his dates that would literally wear the same thing whenever he came around. Shout out to Uncle Andrew. The list goes on. But these specifics were on the top of the mind because they were a part of my story as I continue to hold space as I move forward on this journey called life. Now, being able to shape shift, blend, connect the dots, meet people where they at is a gift and a curse of multidimensionality. But I wouldn't have it no other way. Mm. Now, Brother Tom. Yes, sir. Being as though I see and recognize you to be a multidimensional, multi-hyphenate, creative individual, what advice could you give somebody looking to explore their own identity off the strength? I think the most impactful thing to remember when you do have multiple different things that kind of bring together that curiosity and fascination in your life is that there's not going to be a whole lot of people that relate to that. And sometimes when you share your passions and your goals and your ideas, it's going to be scary or even intimidating to some people. So being honest and true to yourself as you're trying to navigate that and finding grace for even those people that are in your family that do want the best for you, that don't necessarily understand how that path is going to work out. It's honestly to me, some some of the most people have the best intentions, but they've never actually put in the time, energy, and effort to live that experience. So you got to really kind of weigh the reactions that you get from people. Uh, I think if you over-index yourself into everybody else's opinion, it's going to be a good way to keep you from doing that thing that really is going to be the purpose of why you're here. Yeah, I mean, you got to take everything with a grain of salt, right? Uh, what was the, the line we had back in the day? You know, eat the orange, throw away the peel, mm -hmm. right? Because you can't physically have 
or hold the weight of everything that people give you, right? And I do think that that's solid advice for trying to identify who you are, right? Because in order to really have a grasp on the core makeup of you, you need to know where you came from, like who those people were, what they were about. And you'd be surprised to find out that apple really don't fall far from that tree. I, in some cases, it do, though. I'm Sometimes it do. <laughs> that chromosomes get crossed and, you know, you end up left when you're supposed to be right. It's a whole nother thing. We ain't got to dive too deep into it. I feel you on that, man. I feel you on that. And yeah, I do appreciate your exploration and your multidisciplinary, you know, outlook on life. I, I see you, sir. You know, I try to do what I can do when I can do it. Okay. You know what I mean? Hopefully you do. <laughs> slide Don't matter about that. me. <laughs> we got to talk and slide into a relaxed, responsibly segment. Okay, my friend. Now, Brother Tone, this segment is brought to you in part by Frequency Movement, where you can visit me. K.R. Jones for my elevated yoga class as well as roll up and roll out. Both are mindful marijuana use classes Okay, in which we explore our bodies. One, obviously being stretching in our roll up and roll out and elevated yoga. We smoking weed and we doing yoga. Okay. I ain't trying to give you nothing else crazy than that. That's just what we do. Okay. Now, let's talk about our relaxation responsibly segment, Tom. How were you relaxing this week? Man, I got a chance to tap in with Lil Bro this week. And that was honestly... Word? Dan the man? Dan the man. Conservative the Dan. We can't call him conservative Dan this week because uh, it's a little rocky for the conservatives out there. <laughs> hey, man. I don't know where this brother's politics is at. <laughs> That's your family. That's your blood. <laughs> but I tapped in with him and just had a cool conversation again with the little homie about music and what was really inspiring to him. And just to see, again, the level of energy that he comes in with... Some of the useless debates that we have For It's something sure. that's ultimately relaxing bro So you'd be on the opposite end of the conversation Just to be on the opposite end of the conversation But then I could see how he actually Really moves in his day to day kind of life It's like yo you you, I see where you got it from Mr. Me too You know I, I understand sure. what you got going down man I mean y'all are two peas in the same pot Quite literally <laughs> He likes to fight it man How was you relaxing this week? I was relaxing with a little Canned, infused cannabis sparkling water, Tony. Okay. Now, we're not talking about this right here. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about a little something, something else. You know what I mean? You might want to take that off the camera while you're <laughs> talking your other beverage. <laughs> I was talking about a little heirloom, Tony. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, this heirloom beverage uh, is a little... Like I mentioned, sparkling water in a can. That seems to be the way that you go to infuse beverages these days. That's one infusion for sure. And uh, I had my Bev, and I taught class after that. Okay. I had a little joint, too. So I was... I was you was doubled up? Doubled up. And it was a joyous occasion, bro. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed myself. And I went there not planning on practicing that day. But I was moved by the people and the energy in the room, so I had to get my flow on. That's what's up, man. Shout out to the heirloom people, man. Did you know that this was a farm that started off growing apple orchards, and they already had a whole different line that was primarily an alcoholic line, and they shifted into the non-alcoholic business, and they really are embracing these can of culture, man. I'm around for that. You ever smoke weed out of an apple? <laughs> I have. I know you have. Early on. Right? Long ago. If you talk about ago. devices that you've used, you know, I'm here for a good apple. Politics as usual, well, my man. Sounds like you're hoping for something. I funny. hope that you could evolve your decisions and your devices that you're, you know, consumer with in, in the upcoming days. Now, honestly, bro, I hope that most people out there understand that it's okay to be disappointed, but don't feel discouraged. That's honestly the maneuver that I want to leave everybody with for this week. I uh, understand that now more than ever it's time for you to invest in yourself and act accordingly to what the world is putting out in front of you really radically accepting that love for yourself that love for your neighbor that love for the people that are the most important to you in your community and how you fortify your community is going to be the thing that I think helps navigate people towards where that North Star should be bro amen to that man what uh you hopeful for I hope that folks stop suffering in silence and seek the help that they need. Mm -hmm. That's it. 
There we go. I nothing like that, more, man. That's, that's the bow on it. You know what I mean? Man, I don't got nothing else to put on it, man. You know that we are touching down live on the block of the rock. Now, Brother Jones, if they need to tap in with us, where do they need to go to make sure that they can keep up with all the things off the strength? You can find us on Instagram at off the strength underscore, or if you're in the greatest city in the world, sometimes, sometimes. that is New York City. Come on down to Rockefeller Center where you can see us record live and direct at Newsstand Studios at the block in the bottom of the rock. Yeah. If you can't make it in, you could always visit on Instagram at Rockefeller Center or X at Rock Center NYC. It's gonna get a little crazy out there in the next couple weeks. So if you do want to pull up, just know that tree traffic is coming. It's gonna be here. The parking already ain't there. It's gonna be a lot of off-brand characters out there. You know, just don't give them any money, and you should be fine. But you can the still pull up. Foreigners are here, bro. <laughs> Of course, I also want to shout out to good brother Brian Perkins and I did that productions once again. It's been another fantastic episode of Off the Strength. I'm a trainer called Tony. KR Jones. Peace and much love to y'all out there. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Peace. What's good, everybody? I'm a trainer called Tony, and I am here from the infamous Off the Strength podcast asking you today, listeners, viewers, wherever you may be, to please like, listen, and subscribe to our podcast. This is how we're going to continue to be able to deliver you the best goddamn wellness information out here. So if you want to keep hearing this and you want us to keep growing, you are a part of this show just as much as anything else. So please go to offthestrength.com. Make sure you check out our blogs. Make sure you check us out on IG. And if you're hearing this voice and you didn't hit that subscribe button, know that Kyle is going to come looking for you. (laughs) You got that right.